So let's, I, I do want to get started uh, with the college football week 10 preview. Let me, let me check your mic right quick. Give me, give me a test real quick. Check, check one, two. Hey, we're back to, we're back to normal. I like it. All right. Week 10. Uh, I, I start out with four questions every week to, to get a feel of the landscape for college football. Uh, best games of the weekend. I want to start off with Auburn at Texas A&M. That one is, I think, the best game this weekend. There are going to be some fun games, uh, but as far as highly ranked teams and games that matter a whole lot, I do think that Auburn and A&M is the biggest game of the weekend. You uh, you agree with that? Yeah, I don't think it's close. I don't think it's close. I think so as well. Texas A&M turned a corner. Really, Zach Calzada started to turn a corner against Mississippi State. They They lost that game at home, but... You know, after that, they handle Alabama, and then they've had two cupcakes, basically, with Missouri and South Carolina. They are coming off of a bye week. Auburn uh, beat up on a just a damaged, beat-up Ole Miss team last week, uh, but Auburn has been playing really well. These are two teams that are well-coached, that do not beat themselves. I am I have no idea which way to lean on it. I, I, just, I think it's going to be a fascinating football game. The winner of this... At really, it still has a shot at the playoff, even with two losses. I think. Well, Auburn controls their destiny because if they if they win this game, they can beat Bama. A <clears throat> and M would need some help. They would need Auburn or somebody else to beat Bama. So, yeah, yeah. If if Auburn were to lose this and and then beat Alabama, uh, that would toss Texas A and M into the SEC championship game. And with a win over Georgia, A and M could. Uh, find their way into the playoff even with two losses. Auburn, you go ahead and beat Alabama, and then you beat Georgia. Like, if you've got a win over A&M and, you know, Mississippi State and Alabama and uh, Georgia again, which they, they got trounced by Georgia early, but you come back and beat them in Atlanta, Auburn will be in the playoff. So, you know, this is yeah, a, I agree. This uh, game that means a lot. Yeah, I think uh, another big game for this weekend that, uh, that I don't think a lot of people are talking about, I think Mississippi State and Arkansas is going to be one of the best games of the weekend. Like, these two teams are very evenly matched. You want to talk about a coaching matchup. I mean, good gracious. Zach Arnett, the DC, uh, defense coordinator for Mississippi State, against Kendall Bryles, and then Mike Leach on offense against Barry Odom on defense. Like, this is going to be a lot of fun, man. I agree. I love Sam Pittman. I think I think Arkansas can find a way to get back to, to what Arkansas looked like before the season started. They played a couple of teams that just physically outmatched them and out-talented them. I don't think Mississippi State's going to have that luxury. I tend to agree. State's been really good against the run this year, so I'm, you know, obviously we'll pick this here in here in just a little bit in the off the radar pick them. Do you have a game that, that you want to toss out? I've got three other ones that I kind of like this weekend. Well, I mean, I think that Wake Forest game, North Carolina game, is going to be fun. I think it's going to be exciting, and and, and I mean, obviously the Ole Miss Hugh Freeze game has potential to be a lot of fun and exciting, but it also has potential to be a complete utter dutter. Yeah, so. now you're you're not wrong about that. Uh, Michigan State and you Purdue. think we're gonna get anything out of Iowa State, Texas? Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, this game is always close, always close. So I, I think Texas can uh, can hang in there. It's in Ames, and Texas has had success in Ames. They are four and one against the spread. Their last five against Iowa State. You know, I I, I think it could be it could be interesting because Iowa State seems to find a way to beat themselves for whatever reason. And you know, Texas got better players. That doesn't necessarily mean anything. But, you know, they could be a little bit explosive on offense. I, I think we could see some points there. Michigan State-Purdue, I think, is very interesting with Michigan State coming off of that big, big win. Purdue does some stuff that Michigan State is not great at stopping. So I think that one could be very interesting for an afternoon game in West Lafayette. Uh, Oklahoma State-West Virginia, I think, could be a lot of fun. That's a three-and-a-half-point spread right now. I... I think one of my favorite games of the weekend, Chris, is UTSA and UTEP. Like that in El Paso, night game, 10.15 p.m. Central Time on ESPN2. It, it, got, the, it got the ESPN treatment. I This could be a lot of fun. I mean, these are two programs. Now, UTEP, not a great team, but they are 6-2, and two, and they believe, and they are doing an orange out. They are going to have a ton of fans. I mean, they. It, I think they're going to sell out the, uh, the Sun Bowl, uh, which is like 60,000 seats. Like, this is going to be a lot of fun. So I, I think that could be a really fun matchup. I, th- I think they're going to need all 50,000 of those people 
to, to help him win this game. I don't think this game's going to be close. What's the line? The line's pretty big, isn't it? Line's uh, 11. It opened at 12 and a half. Uh, so the public and, and the sharp betters have both been on UTSA in this one. Uh, sorry, on, uh, yeah, on Utah. I, I, yeah. I like UTSA to win this thing pretty easily. I, I, I don't care what the record says if you're not playing anybody, okay? And at some point in time, you got to play somebody. And they just yeah. haven't. They just haven't. They padded that record with with just bottom 100 teams. Yeah, yeah. Now, you, you ain't wrong there. The most to gain this weekend, uh, I think, can be said – the same for most to lose. I think it's. I think it's in that Auburn A and M game. Yeah, I mean it's. And really, I don't know that there's a, a close second at all. I whoever wins well, that game not, has not to gain. Not to gain. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe Wake Forest. And the reason it's Wake Forest is, is if Wake Forest gets game day treatment next week, that's a big deal. That brings a lot of eyeballs. That has a value, a dollar value that that's kind of unbelievable and, and hard to equate. And if they lose, then you know. It, it, it just really hurts because you had so much hope. I say Wake Forest. I did I, have Wake I, I Forest guess this could be the most to gain and to lose. Yeah, I had I had Wake Forest under most to lose, but yeah, with the game day aspect, I do think uh, you could toss them into most to gain as well. As far as a playoff sleeper, uh, I wrote down Auburn, but uh, but again, we could do A and M there as well. They're both teams with two losses. I I really think that both of them have a good shot to make the playoff. If things fall the right well, way, that that the the difference is, is Auburn can. What we said this Auburn controls their destiny. A and M doesn't, and that's yeah. that's where it's really hard. Yeah, no, you're you're right. That's that's why I wrote down Auburn here uh, for for the sleeper uh, because they do control their destiny. This is this is a really well coached football team that's kind of hitting their stride at the right time. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.